Hello and welcome to this video on the ICND1 series. In this video, we're going to talk about DHCP. So we're going to look at what DHCP is. We're also going to look at how DHCP works. And we're going to wrap up by looking at an example of how to configure DHCP. So let's get started. First, what is DHCP? DHCP is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And what that really means is that it's used to automatically assign IP addresses. So for instance, if I have a network of systems, so if I have this network here and I have many users connected, as a network administrator, I've already defined the kinds of IP addressing that I wanted to use in a setup I'm going to use a class C IP address and it's going to be 192.168.1.0/24 for instance. Now, I have two options. First is to go manually to all the users in the building and to manually configure their IP addresses. And even though that's possible, it might become really hard when you have many users. So the other option is to automatically assign IP addresses. And the way to do that is by configuring what's called a DHCP server. And DHCP is just dynamic host configuration protocol. So it dynamically configures the host and gives them IP addresses. It's actually an extension of uh, what used to be called the boot P protocol. And that was a protocol that used to configure devices when we are booting up. So for instance, when we are starting up a system, the system will ask for some parameters like the IP address and the default gateway and the boot P protocol is used to supply all the parameters, but now it's been adapted and it's what's called the DHCP protocol. Two major things we need to know about the DHCP protocol. First, that it operates on UDP port 67 and 68 and because usually when you're asking for DHCP parameters, the systems don't have IP addresses. So DHCP messages are sent as broadcast. So what happens is that a system connects to the network. If it's set up for DHCP, all it's going to do is send a broadcast asking for an IP address. And then all the DHCP servers are going to get that request. And they're going to supply an IP address. Now let's just briefly look at how to configure a system to ask for DHCP. And what you need to do is to go to your network and settings and your network adapter settings and configure it. So I'm just going to bring that up in a second. Okay, so I have my network sharing center up now. And if you're using Windows 7, just go to change adapter settings. And from there, you can pick whatever adapter you want to configure as DHCP. So for instance, if I want my LAN to use DHCP, I'm just going to right click and say properties. And I'm going to go to TCP IP version 4. And here you can see it says obtain an address automatically. So you can either obtain an address automatically, but if I click use the following IP address, then I'm going to make it use a static IP address and then I have to put in an IP address and a subnet mask in a default gateway. And then I have to put in the DS server settings. Now, these are the settings that I would have automatically got from DHCP, but now I have to input them myself. So this is how to make sure a system uses DHCP to obtain its IP address. Now let's move on to the DHCP process itself. And DHCP process is a four step process. So in DHCP, there are four messages. What happens is when a system gets on the network and is configured to use DHCP, it first sends a broadcast. And that broadcast is what's called a discover address. So what it's saying is I want an IP address and then all the DHCP servers on that broadcast domain would actually respond with an offer. So for instance, if we have a system and it's connected to this network. We have DHCP server one and DHCP server two. What happens is that when the system sends a broadcast, both one and two will get the broadcast and they're both going to reply with an offer. But the first offer that the system receives is the one it's going to take. So it's going to get a unicast offer. So when the client receives an offer, what it's going to do is it's going to request for that first offer. So it's going to send another broadcast. It's going to request for the offer. And when it sends the broadcast, the reason it sends a broadcast is because it wants all the other DHCP servers to know that it has got an offer so they can stop sending offers and take back the offer into their pool. So what's going to happen is it's going to send another broadcast and it's going to come to both DHCP servers. So if it's trying to request for DHCP server one's offer, then DHCP server one would now send an acknowledgement. And then that's the end of the process. So it's going to get an IP address. So it's a discover packet, then an offer packet from the server back to the client, and then another broadcast for the request, and finally an acknowledgement from the server.
back to the client. So it's a four-step process, and that's how DHCP works on Cisco routers. Now to configure a router as a DHCP server, there are three major steps. The first thing you need to do is to exclude IP addresses. So for instance, if we have a network that is a sample network here is 172.16.12.0/24. Now it's possible that on these networks you have servers. So for instance, you have a mail server and then you have a file server, and you have a web server, and all the servers are also on the same network. And because they are servers, they need to give them static IP addresses so that the IP addresses will not change. And we configured DHCP for that particular network without excluding any address, then there will be conflicts in addresses because on one hand, the servers would be using the static IP addresses, and on the other hand, DHCP server will be assigning the same addresses to clients, and so it would conflict. So the first thing you need to do is to exclude IP addresses, and I can say, for instance, I want to exclude from addresses 172.16.12.1 all the way to 10, and then I'm going to create the pool and say, okay, this is my DHCP pool, and then I'm going to configure the various parameters of the pool. The parameters we configure are the network address and the subnet mask. Configure the default router on what's known as default gateway. Configure the domain name. We configure the lease time, and lease time is the amount of time the, the address is being leased by a client. So basically a client is just hiring an IP address or leasing an IP address. And so when the lease time is expired, it has to renew the lease. Just think about it like a rent. So when you're trying to rent an IP address and once the rent is expired, you have to renew the rent. And then we have what are called options. Options are just parameters, just like this other parameter, but these are really well-known parameters. So other options are things like that you might configure for a particular environment. For instance, if you're running IP phones and they use DCHP, you configure option 66, and that option is for the IP phones to be able to get their config files from a TFTP server. So that's an example of an option that you can configure. And basically that's how to configure DHCP. So you exclude the IP addresses, you create the pool, and you configure the parameters. Now let's just take a look at this example. So here we have two routers. We have router one, which is going to be the DHCP server. And we're just going to configure it through another router, router two, as a client. So we're going to go over to the command line now. We're going to configure router one as DHCP server with this network, 172.16.12.0/24. And then we're going to configure router two to get an address from router one. Okay, so we're on router one now. And we're just going to configure router one. So we're going to go into the config mode and say comp t. We're going to configure its fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. So it's interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. We're going to give it an IP address, and that's going to be 172.16.12.1. And there, slash 24, so it's going to be 255.255.255.0. We're going to bring up the interface and say no shut. Now, these are our DHCP servers. So the first thing we want to do is exclude IP addresses. What we're going to say is, come out of interface mode, back to the config mode, and we we'll say IP, DHCP, exclude address. I want it to be 172.16.12.1 all the way to 172.16.12.10. So that's the command to exclude IP addresses. IP, DHCP, exclude address. And you put the IP address you want to exclude from the start to the end. And after that, we now create the DHCP pool. So we would say IP DHCP pool. Let's just call it test. So the next thing we're going to configure is a parameter. So we are going to say the network should be 172.16.12.0. And you can actually use slash 24 here. The other thing we want to do is to say the default router should be default router should be 172.16.12.1, which is router one. You can actually use a question mark to figure out what commands you can use. So for instance, we can have all these commands like domain name, like DNS, like default router. Uh, we have configured default router. So let's just configure the domain name. And we can say it's cisco.com. We can configure the DNS server. Let's just use Google as DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 so if you ever on a network that doesn't have a DNS server and you need to use a public DNS server, you should probably use 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And that's Google's DNS server. 
There are actually other ones you can use. For instance, you can use 4.2.2.2 or 4.2.2.3. These are public DNS servers that are always available and they're always up. That's like another way to test the internet. Instead of pinging google.com, you can ping their DNS server 8.8.8.8. Or ping 4.2.2.2 or 4.2.2.3. Now we press enter. It's actually going to take the command. It's going to use them in that sequence. So let's check the least time. And the least time is measured in days. The default is one day. So if you want our least time to be five days, we can just put five. But you should be careful because you should be careful with the configuration of least time because once you've given out an IP address, the IP address cannot be used until the least time expires. So think about guests coming to the network. If they're just coming for a day and the least time is 30 days, for instance, that means for that whole month, the IP address will be tied to that guest, even though that guest is not going to come back to the building. So you should be careful about the configuration of least time so that you can don't give up huge least times and run out of IP addresses. But here we are just going to keep our least time as five. And then finally, we're going to configure option 66. So we're going to say option 66. And in this case, it's going to be an IP because an IP address of the TFTP server, we're just going to give it 172.16, sorry, 172.16.12.5. So we're just going to assume that our TFTP server is on 172.16.12.5, one of our excluded IP addresses. And that's pretty much it for configuring DHCP. So let's just exit. And then we'll exit again and just show run and include our DHCP command. The include command just shows the lines that have DHCP. So if you really want to do DHCP config, the better command to use is the section command. So we're showing the running config here. And then we use the pipes to modify the output. And we can either have include or begin or exclude or section just so that we don't get the overrunning config. So in this case, we're just going to use section and say section DHCP. And then we can see all the DHCP commands. So you can also say something like session router to see all the router commands, but I don't have anything configured. You can say section interface to see all the interface commands. So we can see that DHCP is configured. So let's just save the config before we go on to R2. And the way to save is to copy the running config to the start of config. Basically what that means is that the router has two sets of configs. So there is a running config and a startup config. The running config is like the config that's being used as the router's running. While the startup config is the config that the router uses when it reboots. So when you want to save your config, you're trying to make sure that even if you reboot the router, the config is still going to be there. So you have to copy the running config into the startup config. And you do that by typing copy running config to startup config, or just say copy run start. Or it can even just say write. It does the same thing. I can now let's just go to R2 and configure our client. Okay, so now we're in R2, and all we want to do is make it a DHCP client. And the way to do that is to go into the config mode, so comp T, and say interface fast with the net zero slash zero. We're just going to say no shutdown. And the command would be IP address DHCP. Before we do that, let's go back to R1 and turn on some debug. So we're in R1 now. We're just going to type in debug IP DHCP server. And we're going to debug server packets and also uh, packets and also debug events. So let's go back to R2 and configure it to use DHCP. So we're just going to go to R2 and say IP address should be DHCP. And remember, we used that command. We should be able to start seeing DHCP messages in R1. And there we go. So I'm just going to turn off the bug. Now just look at the DHCP logs. And here we can see that we are receiving DHCP discover packets on fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Next thing we can see is that we are sending the DHCP offer to the client and we're offering it to 172.16.12.11, which is actually the first IP address after the range that we excluded from 1 to 10. The next thing we can see is the DHCP request from the client, 
And finally, we can see the DHCP acknowledgement. So that's the four step process. So you have to discover, the offer, the request, and the acknowledgement. And if we go onto R2, if we show IP interface brief, we're going to see that it's got an IP address and that the method is DHCP. Also, if we show IP route, we can see that a static route has been automatically installed via 172.16.12.1 because here we configured a default gateway to be 172.16.12.1 in the DHCP pool. Another way to check is to show IP DHCP binding. And sure enough, we can see that 172.16.12.11 has been bound to this hardware address. And the time is 2002. Mm, interesting. Actually, we have not configured the clock on this router. So what we can do right now is just configure the clock and say uh, clock set. And the time right now is 1.32 p.m. So it's 13, 32 seconds is zero, zero. And then the day of the month is 31st of August, 2013. Now, if you want R2 to receive the time from R1, you can send it via DHCP, but you can send it via something called the network time protocol. So what we're going to do is that we're going to configure R1 to become an NTP master and configure R2 to become a client so that R2 can get the time from R1. So here we're going to go into the config mode for R1. Remember that we set the clock from the privileged mode, but this time we're going to go into the config mode. And we're going to say NTP master, so NTP master, and here we're going to come here and say conf t, and say that the NTP server is going to be 172.16.12.1. So let's just exit and try to ping 172.16.12.1. So let's show clock to see. Now we can see that R2 has learnt the time from R1, and it's August 31st. 2013. To verify that NTP is working, we can show NTP associations. And here we can see a star. And this is a sign. And that means is that it's synced with the master that we configured it. So that's just a bonus on how to configure NTP and set the clock. But it's not really a bonus. You have to know it for the ICND1 exam. It wasn't supposed to be a part of this video. Anyway, in this video, we have been able to look at what DHCP is, how DHCP works. We were able to look at an example. We also combined it with the NTP, the network time protocol. And in the next video, uh, we are going to look at some security features. Thank you very much for watching.